Hello and welcome to another step question. This is my second one and uh, step two um, and it's from 1999 paper uh, question six. Um, it's a bit tricky this one so let's get started. Um, so reading the first question we've got the, uh, the question find the greatest and least values of bx plus a for x values between minus 10 and 10 distinguishing carefully between the base, uh, the, the cases b is greater than zero, b is equal to zero, and b is less than zero. So the first thing we want to get out of the way really is the vocabulary for dealing with this. Um, so uh, the letters b and a um, are called parameters, and you'll notice that we're not restricted in, in the choice of uh, value that we give to those. Um, x is what we call a variable, and um, if we'd had numbers we, uh, in front of these, uh, in, in this polynomial, we'd record them coefficients, but we don't have any. Um, so we've got parameters and variables, and uh, let's get on with it. So let's deal with the first case where b is greater than zero, the value of b is greater than zero. And what I've done is I'm going to draw a picture, uh, a graph of that, and doing so, you can see that uh, Clearly, if b is greater than zero, we must have a positive gradient, and a is going to be the y-intercept, isn't it? And you can see my gradient is b, because it's b over 1. Um, so, if I want to know the maximum value of y, the max value of y, the range, uh, that's going to, and now the domain is being limited between minus 10 and 10, then when x equals um, 10, we're going to have the maximum possible value of y, which will be 10b plus a. Whereas if um, I want the minimum value of y, then uh, the minimum value occurs when I input uh, x equals minus 10. And so my minimum value is being minus 10b plus a. All right. So um, similarly, I will now look at the case where b is smaller than 0. Um, I hope you agree that if b is a negative number, that we're going to have a gradient that's going down. Uh, a page and it's still going through the y-intercept at a. And I've used some magnitude signs here to make it very clear that uh, this is a negative um, uh, value of b. Um, so if I want to, again want the maximum value of y, that happens uh, clearly at this on the left hand side this time happens with x equals minus 10. And so we're going to say the maximum value now is minus 10b plus a and the minimum value will be when x equals 10 which would be 10b plus a. All right. And of course we must consider the last case, the, uh, the trivial case really, where b equals 0. Now bx plus a becomes simply y equals a. A nice flat line and clearly the maximum and the minimum are the same values, um, a. Right, uh, let's um, think out now about the uh, second part of this question. And the second part is where um, we were asked about the polynomial uh, cx squared plus bx plus a. I hope you've got a copy of the question or else you can just flip back in this video to have a quick look at it. Um, uh, so when we have uh, polynomials of this style, this is a degree two polynomial, otherwise known as a quadratic. And you'll notice that they've told us that um, c is going to have to be greater or equal to zero. Um, so we've got really two cases to consider there, when c equals zero and when c is greater than zero. Um, fortunately for us, the c equals zero is a bit of a trivial case because uh, if you put c equals zero into that um, polynomial, you, you basically get the first part. You get part one again, and we're not going to do that again. But you must write that down for the examiner that you recognised that uh, c equals zero is a bit of a trivial case. So let's focus on c being a, a number greater than zero, and that should also make you think that uh, well, if c x squared and c is a positive number, it must be a happy face quadratic. It's going to have a minimum and not a maximum. Okay, that's going to be important for answering this question. So let's get on to that then, shall we? So uh, I would suggest the first thing we need to do is um, if we uh, if we um, differentiate, 
we can find the value of when well, the differential, this first differential equals zero, we can find the x value of the turning point. And I've written what I did here. Um, so I've differentiated my um, my uh, function to get and now you could write dy dx, but you might come across this notation y prime or y dashed. I call it y dash myself, but I've, I've heard it people call it y uh, prime. And um, you can see that uh, that's being differentiated correctly. I've now put this equal to zero because I want to find the minimum. And if I do that, the value of x where this minimum occurs must be minus b over 2c. And of course, if I've got a y coordinate, uh, x coordinate, I can find a y coordinate because this says up here, if you tell me an x, I'll tell you what y is. And we have an x to give this uh, a, a equation. So let's find the y coordinate. Um, so here we go. If y is equal to cx squared plus bx plus a, I can substitute out the values of x in the equation with my now the desired value of x, and I end up with a y coordinate, which means happily that I can now know that the minimum point on my um, graph is going to be minus b over 2c for the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is going to be a minus b squared over 4c. Right, so why go to that trouble if, to find that uh, turning point if I'm not going to use it? Now, as I said at the beginning, there's no there's no restriction on our parameters. Uh, B, A, and C can they can all uh, have any value we like. So this could this could be well, equal to any number. Um, and so we're going to have to consider um, what happens um, um, around the values of our domain that we're allowed. And what I mean by that is probably explained if we look at the first um, thing we need to consider. What happens? if my turning point has an x value that's lower than minus 10. So here's my asymptote or my line of x equals, uh, uh, not asymptote, sorry, my line x equals uh, minus 10. And for this one, I've imagined the situation where minus b over 2c is an x value that is lower than minus 10. So here's my, my y value, uh, a minus b squared over 4c. Now clearly in this case, I'm only considering the values of x between minus 10 and 10. My minimum value is going to be here, isn't it? And my maximum value is going to be when x equals 10. My minimum value is when, it, um, when x equals minus 10. And if I put those values into my equation, well, it says cx squared, so minus 10, for example, for the minimum, uh, x squared is going to be 100. So we have 100c minus 10b plus a. And my maximum value is going to be 100c plus 10b plus a. So that's that one solved. We've done that the first case. But there's going to be quite a few more cases, unfortunately. We've got to consider what happens if the, the turning point is here in the, this, uh, in the uh, next zone or the following zone or the zone after that. So we've got three more cases to consider. And this is the next one. What happens if... Um, the turning point is between min the x values of minus 10 and 0. So if minus b over 2c is between minus 10 and, and 0, we know we can see the minimum point is going to be a minus b squared over 4c, because there's nothing lower than that. And the maximum is still going to be when x equals 10. And when x equals 10, y is equal to 100c plus 10b plus a. So the maximum value hasn't uh, changed, but the minimum value has. Um, if I go to my penultimate slide, we can see what happens if the turning point is has an x value of between 0 and 10. So um, uh, if that should happen, now we've switched the, uh, the, the graph completely round really, haven't we? You see the maximum is now when x equals minus 10, and the minimum is still going to be a minus b squared over 4c. So uh, the, the range of values, the y values, the range in this given domain that we've been given is going to range between a minimum of a minus b squared over 4c and a maximum of 100c minus 10b plus a. And of course, there's one more case to consider. That is what happens 
if the um, vertex of the if the turning point of our curve is beyond the value of um, of x equals 10 which it could easily be if b is a very negative number that could uh, easily happen and again we can see the minimum happens when x equals 10 now and the uh, sorry the minimum happens when x equals 10 and the maximum happens when x equals minus 10 and so that means that the y values the values between the maximum and the minimum are going to range between a minimum of uh, when x equals 10 of 100c plus 10b plus a that's the minimum value and the maximum value will be 100c minus 10b plus a and of course all it remains for you to do is to um, write down uh, each of those four cases uh, clearly as a conclusion and you are done thank you